Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. NEPA investigating another chemical spill in the Rio Cobre. Community wants Windalco out of the area. New JTA president takes government to task over unsettled weight and other issues. And later in sports, reggae boys lose opening match in Austria. I'm Kelisha Williams and here are the details. The National Environment and Planning Agency, NEPA, is investigating reports of another chemical spill from bauxite company Windalco into the Rio Cobra in St. Catherine. But as Krista Campbell now reports, this time the cries are coming from a community close to the Rio Cobra and a community leader wants Windalco out of the area. The dust has barely settled from the last major chemical spill which caused a big fish kill in the Rio Cobra in St. Catherine two weeks ago before another cry of pollution of the river. But according to Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Senator Matthew Samuda, reports of possible chemical spills in the Rio Cobra are made every two to three days. Since uh, the major incident, there have been no shortage of reports. And I understand the fear and trepidation that exists in the community. We've been checking almost on a constant basis and certainly every time there's a fear expressed, we dispatch a team. This time is no different. A team already visited this morning, didn't see any evidence of a spill. We've been in contact with the National Irrigation Commission, which has water operations along, along the river. No evidence of such at this time. But because of the concern, we've dispatched another team. He says any evidence of pollution of the Rio Cobra will be communicated to the public and the necessary corrective steps taken. But the latest complaint came from the community of Zephyrton, close to the Rio Cobra. Vice Chairman of the St. Catherine Parish Development Committee, Kestanard Gordon, visited the area Tuesday morning. Based on certain information that I got very early this morning, we came on site and noticed that the river color has turned red and there were some white substances floating on, the, uh, on its surface and the, the, the strong smell of caustic soda was very evident even from you before you enter the river from the road way up above. Residents say they started noticing the pollution from about 10 o'clock Monday night. There's no fish in the river because the last spill that they did two weeks ago um, completely eliminated all forms of life in the river. So it's a dead water flowing downstream now, going into the Royal Cobra, going towards the water treatment plant. Residents say it's damaging their livelihood, especially the staging of events like river bash. If the river never contaminated, you can't walk, yes, sir, to the amount of people and the crowd where they right, yes, sir. You can't walk, yes, sir. Yes, an international event, you know, yes, one of the main spots them where people come year to year, you know, just to keep them. You catch me in the summertime, you know, nothing can keep in the summer. From the start and before the summer, nothing can keep. And despite the National Environment and Planning Agency, NEPA's promise of punitive action against bauxite company Wildalco for the chemical spill two weeks ago, Mr. Gordon says it's not enough for all the damages done to residents over the years. It is time that Wildalco goes. It is obvious that Windalco cannot coexist with a clean and healthy environment. Krista Campbell, TVJ News. There was raining applause for the newly sworn in Jamaica Teachers Association President Lasonia Harrison following a shattering speech during her first address to members at the JTA conference last evening. Jamila Maitland is covering the conference in St. James and now reports. Newly installed president of the Jamaica Teachers Association, JTA, Lasonia Harrison, did not mince words when she addressed the members late Monday night. Mrs. Harrison, who was sworn in by outgoing President Winston Smith, advocated for a better compensation package for the nation's teachers. Our members, simply put, need a livable wage. The inflation rate of over 11%. The food bill that is out of this world. Gas prices that continue to soar. This struggle is real. 
Why then do we wonder why our professionals are leaving? And the blows kept coming, most of which were directed at successive governments and representatives from the Education Ministry, including Minister Fable Williams, who was in attendance. No, we are not greedy. We are cognizant of the times. But convince us that you really don't have it by transparent fiscal prudence. Just a question. It's just a question. How many persons are we currently paying in the post of permanent secretary in the Ministry of Education? The Jamaica's Teachers' Council Bill, which is before a joint select committee of parliament, was also a concern. Currently, the draft legislation allows for the government to register and license all teachers. However, according to the JTA, the latter should not rest with the government. Do non-lawyers assess and approve lawyers? Do non-doctors determine who practice as doctors? Why in heaven's name do we insist as a country to tell educators how to practice their craft? And as the teachers prepare for back to school come September, the recommendation from the ministry to plug the gap comes by teacher migration were met with cautious optimism. May the government of Jamaica wake up. Grand Jamaica that everyone seeks a piece of, we should leverage this fact. Return to producing enough teachers for both local and external markets. That is a service we can provide to the world. Jamila Maitland, TV James. A charity organization is complaining about the challenges in bringing items into the country to donate to the needy. STEM Uprising Corporation raised the issue at a recent back-to-school treat and health fair in Clarendon. We shipped 888 bags. Um, we missing over 300 bags. We shipped over 2,056 2, books. We're missing cases of books. We don't know how much yet. Um, we're going to put in a complaint, but we didn't do it yet. 600 students were given basic school items and hand sanitizers at the treat. Some of the children also had medicals done as part of back-to-school requirements. However, CEO of the charity, Wayne Williams, says the challenges they face in sh shipping items for these events are discouraging. Things here. And then we come here and we have to pay tax, etc. transportation. I mean, it's a lot. Things like this make you want to quit because we miss more than half the bags. You know, and most of the bags that missing is girls. I don't know if it's a coincidence, but, you know, when you look and see who really suffering, you know, make we keep going. Residents of Seaforth St. Thomas have decided to take a stance against gun violence following a murder in the area over the weekend. Sandy Williams explains. Residents, members of the church and the police led a lengthy peace march through Seaforth St. Thomas Saturday afternoon to condemn the bloodletting in the community. On Saturday, a man was fatally shot, bringing the total number of murders in Seaforth since the start of the year to 12. According to police, seven of the murders stem from an ongoing gang conflict between Blacksmith Lane and Navarre Lane. PMP caretaker for the Seaforth Division, Leroy Pasley, laments the spate of violence has been significantly impacting lives and livelihood. Many young children are unable to go to school because of the crime. The Businesses are being closed early because of what is happening. We are suggesting, we are asking our young men to understand that whatever they are doing is leading nowhere but to, to degradation. Hence a desperate plea for the crime and violence to come to an end. The devil has stolen a march from the people. But in the name of Jesus, we are claiming back this community for God. 
And so we ask you now to beat back the forces of evil and give your people victory even through this message we pray in Jesus name. Amen. We appeal to the, uh, the, the, the persons within the communities to support love, to embrace peace, and not just to do it in the confines of our own home, but also to go as far as to do it to those around us. Sub-officer in charge of the Seaforth Division, Inspector Michael Carter, says the police will be increasing their presence in the area. He is appealing to members of the community to help the police by sharing information. None of these, murder, none of these murders happen when the police are not in the area, but we are, we are uh, increasing our presence and we're going to go back to the drawing board and put in more strategy. But as I said, we're going to seek in your help from the, from the citizens. We alone cannot do it. Thank you. Tell us what we know. Don't wait until they come to your doorstep that is time. They're going to order. Um, there, is some, there must be somebody, there must be somebody within the police force you have confidence in. You don't have to call seafood. You don't have to call, call center. You can call anywhere in, in the island. Sandy Williams, TVJ News. Continuing the news now, reactions this afternoon to the daylight murder of a retired teacher along the Gale Main Road in St. Mary yesterday. 69-year-old Dennis Matar was reportedly walking along the road about 1.45 Monday afternoon when men on a motorbike surprised him. They reportedly took his licensed firearm, then shot him before escaping. Mr. Matar was a physical education teacher at the Taki High School for over 40 years. I strongly believe, though, that the attackers are not from far. Matar is somebody who would not hurt a fly. And so for somebody to actually take his firearm and kill him, I would believe he know his attackers quite well. Now the community is taking his murder very hard. He's a very jovial person. person you can't talk to. He talked with the young people and so forth. Rally around everything. Go to a funeral, you will see him there. You go to a sport, you will see Mr. Matar there. So I, would, I don't know what really happened, but I would like them to, somebody to find out what really happened to Mr. Matar. I think we are feeling a bit, I don't know if betrayed is, 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 is the right word to use, but for someone like a Matar who would have served and mentor hundreds of young men, we are at a loss for word to know that he would have been gone down in this gruesome way. This is the 28th murder in St. Mary since the start of the year. And it's now time for the Business Minute. Here's Cody and Barrett's. Coconut farmers across the island are urging the Coconut Industry Board, CIB, to increase the price from the current $65. The growers say they can get a wholesale rate of $90 per coconut elsewhere instead of selling to the CIB for use in the retail shop it operates on Waterloo Road in St. Andrew. Speaking at the recent Coconut Growers Annual Meeting over the weekend, CIB Director A.A. Bobby Pottinger says if the price is not adjusted, the coconut industry will cease to exist. About 3,000 white-collar workers at Ford Motor will lose their jobs as the company cuts cost to help make the long transition from internal combustion vehicles to those powered by batteries. Leader of the Dearborn, Michigan automaker made the announcement on Monday in a company-wide email saying that 2,000 full-time salaried workers would be let go along with another 1,000 contract workers. The cuts represent about 6% of the 31,000 full-time salaried workforce in the United States and Canada. That's it for the Business Minute. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. It's now time for the top regional and international stories with Sandy Williams. In regional news, Prime Minister Roosevelt Scarrett has called on the international community to examine the possibility of developing one umbrella legislation as Dominica continues its efforts to deal with money laundering and the financing of terrorism. 
Scarrett, who got parliamentary approval for three pieces of legislation, says the proposed umbrella legislation could be a standard framework across the global space. He added that despite the economic impact of COVID-19, his administration still felt it necessary to provide funding for the acquisition of scanners for the ports. On the international scene, storms which caused dangerous flooding in Utah, Arizona and Texas are lingering in East Texas and are expected to bring more rain today. The systems are also stretching into the lower Mississippi Basin. The fire department in Dallas says a 60-year-old woman appears to have died after her vehicle was flooded. The National Weather Service says a tornado is responsible. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Sandy Williams. Thanks, Jeremy. And that's the Midday News. I'm Kalisha Williams. Join us at 7 for primetime news. On behalf of the entire team, good afternoon.